it's been a couple weeks since I've been on. Um, had some family stuff to deal with, and I apologize uh, for not making it. But last time we were on, it was you know, Kyrie Irving was here. You know, we had Kyrie Irving to talk about, and it's funny because now uh, we have Kyrie Irving to talk about again. And um, I have an episode that's dropping tomorrow morning, and I briefly, 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 briefly had uh, talked about this, um, and basically. For those who aren't aware, you know, Kyrie, not vaccinated, as we all know, he's kind of one of those like go against the grain kind of people. And now in the state, well, in the state of New York, just like you talked about with Washington, they, you're not allowed, like employees have to be vaccinated. So he can't play for the Brooklyn Nets at home games because he's not vaccinated. And so he was kind of, they were in this thing where, well, he's only going to play road games. He's only going to, like, they let him so he can practice. And I think the Nets, like, the organization and the players were just kind of like, oh, you know, like, he's doing his Kyrie thing. But eventually, you know, he'll get the vaccine and he'll play. And when they realized, oh, he's not, um, they were like, well, Kyrie, if he can't be a 100% participant, he can't, like, we're not going to play him at all. Like, we're, just, we're not doing that. And... So I think that, you know, really where the Nets kind of messed up is try, even entertaining that in the first place. Like, oh, yeah, you know, he'll, he'll like, they should have, like, I don't know. Anyway, so Kyrie, of course, is not getting this vaccine, blah, blah, blah. And he's very much like, oh, I want to, what, what was the, what was the quote? He wants to be a voice for the voiceless or whatever it was. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, he's like, oh, please respect my decision. It's a personal decision. Um, and you, you don't get to do that. Um, I, I couldn't care less, honestly, about, you know, you know, I, I can respect standing on your, standing on your, standing on, standing on your ground. Hey, I believe in this. I'm going to stand behind this and no one's going to push me off of that hill. I'm willing to die on this hill. I can respect that. I can respect having a cause, having a purpose. And I do think that Kyrie Irving's heart is in the right place, right? What I don't, think you get a chance to get away with is the whole hey i want to be a voice for the voiceless and not use your voice you don't get to it doesn't get to be a personal decision at that point when muhammad ali decided i'm not going to the military and got arrested uh when they drafted him he didn't say oh well hey it's just a personal decision you know please respect my decision and blah 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 he didn't get to say that when you decided and talking about Kyrie, when he decided to put himself as the face of this, right? He took all that personal decision away because now it's a group decision. And if you're going to be the face of it all, if you're going to be the voice of it all, you have to speak. You don't get to go hide in the corner. You don't get to do that. And that's my problem. I couldn't honestly care less about his decision to take get the vaccine or not. I care about like, yo, man, on top of the fact that these people aren't voiceless. We have heard Plenty of people who are like, oh, you know, they hate mask mandates. That that group of people, whoever they are, are very well represented. They didn't need Kyrie. They didn't ask for Kyrie to come be the face of this. He decided to self-appoint himself as the leader of this and then decide, well, but at the same time, I'm going to go crawl in a hole. And that's just not okay. Yeah, I mean, look, the this is the same lead. And, you know, to a different extent, allowed Magic Johnson to continue playing through the AIDS pandemic. And, and when that thing was running rampant in what the late eighties, early nineties, and it was really starting to become a thing where they didn't know whether or not they had a cure for it. They didn't know whether or not it was treatable. They didn't know much. And they allowed Magic Johnson to continue playing, which he had it and they know he had it. Kyrie might get it. Right, Kyrie might be a carrier. Kyrie might get sick, but he's not. And and this is a league that you know has has sat there and told us time and time and time again that they want to be they want to be the face of of movements. They want to be the face of of saying this and saying that they don't care about the politics they want they want what's right to be right and then they do this like to me that is the ultimate that to me that just undid 
everything that they were trying to do over even the last two years. It just undid everything that they were trying to be about and everything that they were trying to, to push to their fans, something that they were trying to voice to their fans. And you just undid it with this because to say that Kyrie Irving can't play at home games only, at home games, mind you, which is really weird because he could go to, what was the other one? The, the, it was the Clippers, right? It was the other one uh, that said? The Warriors. Yeah, so he could go to the Warriors and play, but any untested Warrior couldn't play in that game, and any untested Warrior could go to Brooklyn and play in a game, but Kyrie can't go to Brooklyn and play a game. Like, it it, it makes zero, zero sense. They're, they're not trying to do anything. What they're trying to do is appease their political affiliations. They're trying to appease the people that that promote the sport. They're trying to appease political agenda with this. And that's, I mean, that's just plain and simple. It, it's, it's right out in the open. And with everything that they've been trying to do, look, I was fine with, with you know, the, the walkout, you know, at uh, during the bubble. I was fine with all the stuff they were trying to do. I understood the cause that they were fighting for. I understood what they were doing with the, with the shirts and, and with the kneeling and with the protesting. Hell, I'm a Marine. I fought for their right to do that. So I understand that part of it. What I don't understand is how you can take all of that and say all of that and then push forward with this. Because that's it's it's the exact opposite of everything you've just been trying to say for two years. Now, now remember though, remember, this isn't the NBA. This is the net specifically, right? So, like, for example, um Jonathan Isaac, right? He doesn't get he's not getting the vaccine. The NBA doesn't mind him. They're not they're not saying he can't play. This is specifically because of a rule in New York. It's like New York, uh, California, and maybe a couple other places um that are saying that that's why the nets are saying it the nba where i am with you is the nba you don't for change to happen you can't just like walk the the narrow the straight sword yeah. whatever, whatever the phrase is the nba doesn't take a stand for what they feel is not right what the nba does is they say hey well we did our part we said the right things you know we didn't make them quit but the nba is not like hey Kyrie, we got your back and I think right. that's where the NBA could, if they really want to prove that they feel the way they say they feel, that's what they, you know, and, and what can they do? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's do. funny that Brooklyn, and, sorry, sorry, Buck. It, it, it's, it's funny that Brooklyn and California and the other couple of places are like, oh, Kyrie can't play, you know, this player can't play, that player can't play. But on Saturdays when college football is going on, 10,000 people can pack the stadium, jump up and down, maskless, and that's cool, but Kyrie can't play. It's mm -hmm. because it is it is inside. Let's just be honest, honest about that. But uh, here is what the NBA could do. Hit him in the pocket. How much revenue do you think a Nets home game brings to the state of New York, to the city of of what is it's wherever they play? Brooklyn, uh, Brooklyn. Is it actually in in mm -hmm. Brooklyn? Oh, okay, okay, okay. So hit him in the pocketbook. Say, hey, Nets, you won't have any home games this year. Every home game will be played in Philadelphia. Sorry, take a stance like Major League Baseball did. Look what Major League Baseball did with the Toronto Blue Jays. They moved him out of Toronto and moved yeah. him into Buffalo because Canada didn't want them us crossing the border to go over there and play because they didn't want unvaccinated Americans going over there and playing. So what did they do? They said, all right, fine. We're not playing in Toronto then. Toronto, your home games are now in Buffalo. Yeah, Some of your home exactly games will be in the, Florida. If the NBA really wants to push this, push, this, push, this, push this agenda that they've been pushing for the last two years, do that. Hit them in the pocketbook. Hit them where it counts. Or if, you're, if you want your star player to play, get a bubble again. I mean, the bubble was pretty successful, right? They didn't have any COVID test or any positive test. Just besides the one that brought the hookers in or whatever, I don't know. But I but, but, that's on that. but, uh, but hit them in the pocketbook, Evan. Like, that's how the NBA can back Kyrie and whoever else is not getting the vaccine. Yeah, the money talks, right? Yeah. And so when they – and here's the thing. Here's what another thing people have to realize. The players don't run the NBA. 
And Adam Silver doesn't really run the NBA, right? <laughs> the owners run yeah. the NBA, okay? Oh, but the owners on. are the same. The players, the, NBA. Don't, the, don't, the don't players are the reason people watch players. the NBA. But at the yeah. end of the day, de- okay, like there, the NBA is tethered towards certain people for media reasons, right? LeBron James. Mm-hmm. But the players don't run the NBA. That's why there's collective bargaining is because it's players versus owners. And it seems like every CBA, they're trying to adjust something because the owners got one up on them on the last CBA every time or whatever, right? So the owners are really, the big money people are really the ones that own the NBA. And the problem is the owners have the same similar agendas of the people who are saying the things like, hey, if you don't have a ma- if you're not vaccinated, you can't play. So now when you have owners who run the NBA, how can the NBA back basically go against the politics when the owners behind the scenes, behind the cameras, support the politics? A hundred percent. It's complete politics. A lot of this, and, and don't get me wrong, but like, again, I've said it before and I'll say it again. COVID's clearly a real thing. People have clearly died from it. It's a real thing. It's dangerous for people who have underlying conditions. It's dangerous if you catch the pneumonia from it. It can take your life. The numbers, that's another debate. I Do I believe the numbers? No. I mean, anytime you give CEOs of hospitals extra money for positive cases, the numbers are going to be skewed. Nothing you can do about that. So that's fine. But this whole thing is about the politics. This whole thing is about how much money are they going to make off of it? How much money do you think, how much money do you think they've made off the vaccines? How much money do you think they're going to make off of needing a booster from the vaccines? Granted, they're giving a lot of people these shots for free, but somebody's paying for them. Somebody's paying for them. You don't think that there's a direct reflection in gas prices. You don't think there's a direct reflection in, in, in tax hikes. You don't think there's a direct, you're paying for it. You just don't know that you're paying for it. So people like it, it, and that's just one of the things. It's one of the things politics has done. It's one of the things politics will continue to do, which is divide and conquer. And that's what they do. And they've done a great job of it over the last 10 years or so. I'm not going to lie. They've, they, 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 especially over the last, you know, since probably 2018, they've done a tremendous job of it. And every four years, every four years, something else comes up. And it's been that way for the last three elections. Facts. People, you know, I don't like to get too political, but people just some at some point you you have to open your eyes and understand that this whole thing isn't as black and white as it seems. And maybe if you look at things from both sides of the fence, as opposed to through political affiliations, you, you might understand. So, Kevo, you brought up something very intriguing that I want to talk about here. You said that the owners of the NBA teams are, you know, striving for their political agenda. And if you want to toe that line a tad bit here, I believe every NBA owner is a white owner, right? And like we've heard the Don, the Don Sterling tapes or the old click Clippers owners. And but yet Silva wanted to push other political agendas like on it. So if he really wanted to really push the agenda, like with the whole Black Lives Matter thing within the bubble and then the Breonna Taylor thing and the George, and, and like the law, life, life, law, law, life and the George Floyd, I've heard behind the scenes talks with these owners saying this is dumb, right? Like this is, this, this is hurting our brand. But Adam Silva wanted to push that agenda. So if he really wanted to push this, I don't want to play in New, New York because of X, Y, Z, he could probably get it done. Let's just be honest about it. But but with that being said, with that being said, the reason the owners, while they may very well be against the the Black Lives Matter um, uh, uh, mementos and, and signage on the court and things like that, it's not really affecting their bottom line. When you say, hey, if, if, if you say we're not playing in New York, you hit owner's pocket. What happens then is owner doesn't have money to keep back in the fundraiser for governor's pocket, right? But you also now open Pandora's box. Well, that means we have to do that in New York. That means we have to do that in Washington. That means we have to do that in California. There are five teams in California. Right. Yeah. Right. Like 
everybody, you know, the, when you guys brought up the Blue Jays thing, it was a great point, but that's only one team. We're talking about seven different teams. Um, and it's hard to do that when because you, you have to do it everywhere. But I want to bring this back full circle because the conversation we're having right now, this is what I mean when I say progressive conversation. If Kyrie came out and said, I'm not getting the vaccine because these mandates do X, Y, and Z, and they push this agenda, and they do this, and they and he brings out the stuff we're talking about, then I'm cool with it. All right, cool. You yeah. have a purpose. We're but having instead, a whole different conversation. A whole different conversation. But instead, this isn't the conversation he wants to have. Kyrie Irving, Irving wants to go against the grain. Remember now, this is the guy who said, hey, I want to leave Cleveland because I want to be LeBron for somebody else. I don't want to like be little brother anymore. And then he realized, okay, I can't do it. Let me call KD. <laughs> this is the guy who said, hey, the earth is flat. <laughs> then came back and said, um, actually, it's not that I think the earth is flat. It's just that I think we should open up the conversation instead of just assume that it's round. This is the guy who said, hey, I'm not getting the vaccine. And then he came out and said, well, it's not that I'm anti-vaccine. I just don't like the fact that people are losing their jobs to vaccine mandate. This is the stuff I'm talking about. And think about this. One last thing on Kyrie. Remember, I don't know if you guys heard, remember when Travis Scott and uh, Kylie Jenner bought that school bus yeah. because their daughter was like, oh, I'm not going to know what it's like to ride the bus. So they brought a school bus and people who like had to actually like normal people like us who actually had to deal with like the pain of riding a school bus kind of found that disrespectful. Like yeah. really, like you're so disconnected with society, like you're making a publicity stunt out of riding the bus. Like, let's flip that on Kyrie now. Is it not a little bit disrespectful? Hey, I'm over here pinching pennies. I lost my job to a mandate, and you're choosing to lose your job so you can see what it's like to be me, even though you're sitting on millions and millions and millions, maybe hundreds of millions that you've earned through whatever, and you're not really actually going through it with me. Yeah. But you want to, but you just want to put yourself there so that you can be the face of whatever. And that's where I'm a, I was like, so I. On the court, I'm not a big fan of LeBron James. Off the court, I'm a tremendous fan of LeBron James. On the court, I think he's a flopper, and I think he whines, and I, I think that he's part of the reason why the NBA is not really a, a product that I care to watch at the rate I used to. Off the court, the guy puts his money where his mouth is. The guy pays for educations. The guy uh, helps troubled youth. The guy puts his money back into his community, does the things that he needs to do. And Kyrie's just not that. <laughs> Kyrie is, is just not. Kyrie is, he's a lot to me, he's a lot like Colin Kaepernick. To me, I believe Colin Kaepernick doesn't want to play in the NFL. Colin Kaepernick wants to play in the limelight. And that's where Kyrie Irving's at right now. That's a great yep. That's a great point. That's a great point, man. And it's like,